I know. I thought you ran off and joined a circus or something. <laughs> Ready? Yeah. Yay! Well, I'm Joe Esposito. Glad you could be here. Anybody listen to me on the radio? That's what I look like. Sorry, that's what I look like. Sorry. <laughs> Glad you're here. Fun lecture tonight. Talking about pain management. Pretty much everyone has this issue. Uh, I don't know anyone who's totally pain free. And we're going to talk about pain. And in fact, I think I might be the only chiropractor in the state of Georgia who's board certified in pain management. Actually, I'm also board certified in chiropractic, orthopedics, uh, said pain management, double board certified in nutrition, BS in nutrition, retired dietitian, uh, award winning author, where my books are, there you go. Uh, the radio show now is we're in about 50 markets across the country. I think we're the largest health radio broadcast in the world right now. How cool is that? Uh, been in practice a long time. And some of you are patients. I see some patient faces out there, so welcome. I can't say who you are because that would break HIPAA laws. You know, I can't even look at you. <laughs> so, <laughs> and so we're going to talk about today's pain management. I want you to understand several things about pain. And the first thing I'm going to say is really controversial. And the first thing is that pain is good. To a point, of course. Because pain tells you something's wrong. And one of the things we learned way back when in school is that if somebody can't feel pain, that's a very serious problem. That means the brain is not perceiving pain and there's an issue, we need to do something about it right away. So pain can be a good thing and it prevents you from causing more damage. You touch a stove, you pull away, right? And it's not just your hand that pulls away. Think what happens when you're in pain. Every part of your body is affected. You've had a headache, right, and you're grumpy, okay? And you're mean and you can't sleep and you can't work and you can't concentrate. So pain can be a good thing my hand pulls away from the stove to prevent further damage, long term it can be very serious. So dealing with chronic pain patients, we deal with it all day, every day. And patients come to our offices and the biggest complaint I've gotten in all the years I've been in practice is, why didn't I do this sooner? There you go. <laughs> why didn't I get treatment sooner? And my answer is, I don't know. <laughs> didn't, know didn't know any better, right, yeah. And so some people call me up, I've been listening to you on the radio for 10 years, 15, I've been reading your books, I've been researching you for 30 years now. So what took you so long? <laughs> so what I want to get across right away is if you have a problem, fix it. Because pain is just a warning sign. The way the body works is your brain is sending messages down your spine, out your nerves to every cell in the body. Then the cells in the body send a message back up to the brain. It's afferent and efferent messages, they're called. One going in, one going out. And the brain needs stimulation in order to work. For the brain to work, you need three things. Oxygen, stimulation, and nutrition. Those are your three things. If you don't have any one of those, the brain can't work. So stimulation can be a good thing. You right now are stimulating your brains. You're sitting here, you're listening, you're learning. So that's a good thing for the brain. Pain can be a stimulant, but then it can blow out the brain after a while. Too much pain can be a big problem. So the brain has to perceive what's going on, send a message back to the body and say, okay, do this. And the body sends a message back up, I did it, now do I do next, and bop, 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 back and forth. And the way those messages are transmitted is over nerves. And in the nerves, we have little things called synapses. And what a synapse is, is the message is traveling along nerve at a very, is it 450 feet per second? I think it is, right? And it hits a synapse and it jumps through the synapse and then goes on. The synapses are there to make the message faster because the key is getting the message as quickly as possible to keep you alive. In those synapses, we have chemicals. And those chemicals are called neurotransmitters. So neurotransmitters are a chemical that makes us work. Now in the brain, there's several of them. If you listened to my show last week, I was talking about the six major neurotransmitters, and in two hours I covered two of them. I had way more information than I had time. Okay, so we're gonna talk about the neurotransmitters and what they do, and how that affects pain. Okay, and this is the key. You have to have the raw materials to build the neurotransmitters to make the nerves work. And that's where so many people are deficient. You don't have enough neurotransmitters to make the nerves work, so the nerves malfunction. The body says, okay, something's wrong. I better send out a warning signal. Let's make it pain. Okay, so a lot of the pain management that we're gonna talk about today, you can handle. You don't need me for that. Some of it, you do need me for that. We'll talk about that later, okay? So, the brain is, we've got these neurotransmitters working and everything's supposed to work properly. Two things can interfere with the messages to and from the brain. Chemical or physical. Now, chemical would be 
Food, drugs, alcohol, environmental toxins. Anybody get a headache from sniffing perfume? Like me? Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah, right? So there's a chemical reaction causing pain. You pour acid in a cut, okay, or just on your skin. So chemical can cause pain. Physically, if you have a bone pinching a nerve, if a muscle spasms and pinches a nerve, it hurts. But 90% of your nerves don't feel pain. Uh-oh, now we got a problem. What if one of those nerves malfunction? You don't know it. We'll talk about that too. So you have to have messages going back and forth. 10% of the time you feel pain, 90% of the time you don't. So imagine if you're a chronic pain patient, what else is going on that you don't even know about? So if I have a pinched nerve in my head, I may have a headache going right along here. It's called the greater occipital nerve, and I've got a headache. I may have shooting pain down the back of my leg. Sciatic pain comes from my low back. But what about my kidneys? I don't feel my kidneys. So if I don't feel them work, I don't feel them not work. Anybody ever go to the doctor, get a blood test, and they say, you have fill in the blank. Or we take your blood pressure, you have high blood pressure. I feel fine. I have high blood pressure, I have diabetes. Because 90% of the time, you're not aware of what's going on. So pain management we're talking about, but I also want you to be aware there can be other things going on as well. Okay? So physically, if a bone is out of place, if a muscle spasms, uh, we need to put those bones back in place. And that's what we do as chiropractors, my team of doctors and I. Chemically, we talk about the seven foods. Every lecture seems to have the same seven foods. If you've been to my lectures before, it's all the same seven, right? So that's how easy it is. There's only seven foods I want you to avoid. You fill in the topic, I'll do an hour lecture on it, and it's the same seven foods. Anybody know what they are? Can you say them? Alcohol. Alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, artificial sweetener. Yeah. Come on up, guys. So for you new folks, alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, and artificial sweetener, you're thinking... That's my diet. That's my... There you go. <laughs> I would die if I gave up alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, and artificial sweetener. Is Stevie okay? Stevie's okay. Okay, okay yeah. So alcohol destroys brain cells, and that's what we're talking about is the brain. So more alcohol, more brain damage. Little alcohol, less brain damage. Okay? And alcohol alters your pain perception. Right? Anybody ever fall down, go boom? Wake up the next morning going, oh, my head. Oh, and my leg. Oh, and my tooth. You know? <laughs> so alcohol will numb your perception of pain. So you think you're Superman. However, you will always pay the price. And I see a couple of heads nodding there. Means you went to college, right? <laughs> Boy, she wouldn't even look at me. <laughs> How does he know? Wow, does he see the videos on YouTube? <laughs> so alcohol numbs your perception of pain, and that's dangerous. Because we started the lecture by saying if you don't feel pain, that's bad. Right? So alcohol, not a good thing. Alcohol is also diuretic. Diuretic means it makes you pee, right? Do you ever notice you drink one beer, you pee out three? Yes. Where those other three beers come? Right? <laughs> guilty, guilty, guilty. But alcohol, it, dehy it dehydrates you. And the reason is you have a neurotransmitter chemical in your brain called vasopressin. Vasopressin prevents you from peeing all day. When you put alcohol in your body, it shuts down your production of vasopressin because the body doesn't want alcohol getting to the brain because the brain controls everything. See how it all starts to tie together now? And if the alcohol gets up to the brain, it destroys the brain, so the brain shuts down the production of vasopressin, so you pee more to get the alcohol out of the system. In the process, you dehydrate. When you dehydrate, the brain shrinks. That's why you wake up the next morning with a hangover. There you go, right, okay? So it's important that we keep the body hydrated. And number one thing I'm gonna have you walk away with today is you have to make sure you're getting enough fluid if you're a chronic pain patient. So when you dehydrate, it causes the, everything to compress and dry up like a sponge, and it hurts more. So step number one, you gotta drink a lot of water. When I say fluid, that doesn't mean scotch, okay? But not scotch and water, just, just water, okay? So, but alcohol, of course, dehydrates you, not a good choice. Water is your choice, that's the, the fluid you wanna drink. Now, if you wanna add a little stevia to it to sweeten it up, knock yourself out, that's awesome. You wanna have an herbal tea with that? That's fine too. But I don't want you drinking things like soda and thinking, okay, that's fluid, okay? Acid foods make the nerves hurt more. So if you're on a high acid diet, you're gonna be in a lot of pain. So if you're a chronic pain patient, or a regular pain patient, right? Somebody who's just acute pain patient, I want you to try something. I want you to go to the drugstore and get yourself some pH papers. We might have them here. I'm not sure if we have them here or not. Get some pH papers. pH is gonna measure how much acid there is in your body. 
And I want you to do this. I want you to take the pH. Tomorrow morning when you wake up, pee a little bit because I want you to flush out your urethra, get all the junk out of there. And then I want you to just wave the paper through the, through the pee. And there's going to be a color chart on there. And I want you to compare the color chart to what you, your pH paper looks like. You should be about 6.5 to 7.0. If you're about 6.5 or lower, you are in a state of acidity or acidosis. And if you're in that point, we can give you the best chiropractic care in the world. And you can take the best drugs in the world. But you're probably still going to have pain because your body's too acidic. Okay? So if you're 6.5 or lower or even close to 6.5, you want to up your pH, which increases your alkalinity. To me, it was always backwards. I thought acid would be higher and alkaline would be lower, but it's not. It's backwards. So lower, bad. 6.5, 7.0. So what do we do to alkalize the system? We stop putting the acid foods in. Your body will buffer itself very quickly as soon as you stop putting the acids in. And the body uses minerals to neutralize the acids. And the main mineral that the body uses to neutralize the acid is calcium. So patients call me and I get emails literally every day. Uh, that's not an exaggeration from all over the world because the show is national heard all over the world. And uh, starting Thursday, as a matter of fact, I'm meeting with my uh, people from the radio station and we're going to get an RSS address. You know what that is? I, I don't know. I just, oh, you know what RSS is? I'm getting one Thursday, which means we'll be podcast all over the world, okay, which is even cooler. So hopefully we'll be the number one podcast in the world. And so uh, podcast PH. Lost there for a second. Okay. pH. Calcium. Calcium. Thank you. There. I know it's going back somewhere. Okay. Got excited about my RSS address that I just learned about. So. so the body uses calcium. So I get emails from all over the world and people, one of the big questions I get is, I got osteoporosis. What do I do? Two weeks ago on my show, I did a show on women's health issues. And if you didn't hear it, it's on my website. We have it on, on my website podcast and my card. Everybody has my card at my website. So we have about well over a thousand hours of podcast. They have audio and video. This will be one of them, by the way. This will be on tomorrow, probably. So the body, if it, they say, what do I do with osteoporosis, osteopenia? Osteopenia is the beginning stages of osteoporosis. It's not a disease. It's a red flag. Okay, something's wrong. It's going to become osteoporosis if you don't fix it. And I find that every osteoporotic patient I've ever seen in my entire career, and I've seen lots, they, are, they have a high acid diet. I have never seen one with a plant-based diet ever have osteoporosis. Ever. Okay? So trick number two, aside from water, is you have to eat more plants. Mm -hmm. Two things happen. Number one, plants are alkaline, usually. The reason they're alkaline is they're high in minerals to neutralize the acid. Did you follow that? Okay, getting some advanced chemistry here. So more plant-based diet, stronger bones. The other thing you have to do is put stress on the bones. When you put stress on the bones, the bones build up bone mass. It's called Wolf's Law. Some guy named Wolf, no idea who he or she was, decided that if you put stress on a joint, it's going to build up calcium deposits. So if you put stress on your bones, you're going to build up strong bones. When I say stress, you don't have to jump up and down. Walk. Something as simple as that. Clean, clean house. Clean your house. Clean my house. Clean somebody's house. <laughs> and that will start to build up the bone mass. Okay? Does milk build bone mass? No. No. Okay, it's a study called the Nurses' Study. It's an ongoing study and it's interesting if you read that. And the bottom line of this part of the Nurses' Study says that the more dairy products you consume, the higher the rate of osteoporosis. Wow. What? <laughs> Milk has two amino acids in it called methionine and cysteine. Methionine and cysteine are acids. They have to be neutralized. The body uses calcium to neutralize the acids. And if you drink milk in America, it, especially in Georgia, it's got to be pasteurized. And you pasteurize the milk, the calcium bonds to the casein. And when calcium bonds to casein, it's not available anymore. You need an enzyme called renin to break down the casein, which you don't produce. So the calcium is bound to the casein, it's gone. You can't break it down. So there's a little bit of calcium in milk, but the methionine and cysteine offset the amount of calcium, so you actually go into negative calcium balance. More dairy products, higher osteoporosis. Well, darn. So just because milk is high in calcium and bones are made of calcium, doesn't work that way. And here's the other kicker. Bones are made mostly of calcium. But you have to have these other little ingredients to make them work. Like vitamin D. 
vitamin K2, boron, magnesium, silica. A lot of stuff goes into making the body work properly. And if you don't have all those nutrients in just the right mix, it's not going to work. If you ever made a cake and left out the baking powder, what happens? But it's only an eighth of a teaspoon. It's the thing that makes everything else work. And so that's where the problem comes in, is that people think I'm, I'm low in, in uh, bone mass, I better eat calcium. Work. Okay. Uh, I have a new line of supplements out. We have the basic ones here, which hopefully we'll have time to talk about. But I have my own line of supp more supplements we added because you, my listeners, were demanding it. Well, Dr. Joe, you talk about vitamin D. Where, where can I get it? You talk about vitamin K2. I don't even know what K2 is. Where do I get it? Talk about enzymes. We talk about probiotics. We talk about adrenal problems. A couple of weeks ago for Valentine's Day, I did the Food Romance Connection. There's no children here, is there? No? Okay, we're good. Okay, so the Food Romance Connection and how food affects your love life. And we talk about circulation. You need to have good circulation for men and women to function normally. And so I came out with a new supplement called Citrulline. It's a citrulline product. It's called Dr. Joe's Nitric Oxide Boost. Citrulline converts into nitric oxide. Nitric oxide opens up your blood vessels. Well, guess what? We sold out how quickly? <laughs> like in a week? <laughs> And yeah, oh, vitamin D too, yeah, that's important. Yeah, yeah, but what about this citrulline stuff? You know, we've got the enzymes. Yeah, yeah, but what about that nitric oxide stuff? So we, have, uh, we had to order a ton more, actually. But the citru citrulline converts to nitric oxide, opens up your blood vessels, increases circulations, not only to your reproductive organs, because we are being taped, to your brain. Helps your brain work better. Okay, and the key to health is this. When it comes to nutrition, it's not so much what you eat, it's what you don't eat. That's important. So with nutrition, most of it is passive. So if you can't do that, to, if you can't not do that, I don't know how else to make it easier for you. I'm asking you to not do something, okay? So pain management, back to acid again. If you have acid, it robs the body calcium. Calcium robs muscles, calcium from the bones, and now you got a problem. Another thing we have to worry about is magnesium. Magnesium relaxes our muscles, works very well. Most of us, not you of course, because you're my listeners, most of us are magnesium deficient. Because you don't eat enough fruits, vegetables, nuts, and seeds. Gee, it sounds like something else I talked about. So you've got to get magnesium into your system. Magnesium relaxes your muscles, and it, it don't take too much of it though. Because I've heard people say, I get cramps in my legs, I'm going to take a bunch of magnesium. Well, that's what they make milk of magnesia out of. And guess what? Your colon is a muscle. And if it relaxes too much, <laughs> you got problems. So, <laughs> yeah. So just be careful if you're going to take magnesium. And that's why I don't like just, just shotgunning. Well, I read I got something today. Well, I read an article that uh, tomatoes have lectins in them and I should never eat lectins again. Isn't that true? Well, you're kind of taking something out of context there. I mean, that's a whole other lecture on lectins. But when you put acid into the body, it can rob the body of calcium, it throws off the calcium-magnesium balance, magnesium helps relax the muscles, and now you can have pain. So magnesium can work very well to relax your muscles if you have a muscle problem. Many times it's a pinched nerve and not a muscle problem. And patients come to me all the time, Doc, I got nerve pain. Well, what other kind of pain is there? <laughs> well, it's muscle pain. Okay, but the muscles are controlled by the nerves and the nerves carry the impulses up to the brain. It's all nerve pain. So when I hear the word nerve pain, I kind of go, eh, I'm not buying that there. So, so if you're eating too much acid, you're messing up the calcium-magnesium balance and you've got a problem. That's an issue. So remember, pinch nerves, chemical imbalances. So we've got dehydration. That can cause pain. Coffee. Coffee also dehydrates you. And coffee messes with a neurotransmitter one of the few I got to talk about last week. Um, and that's my fault, I went too long. It's called a denison. It's a neurotransmitter you've never heard of before, is it? What a denison does is denison gets absorbed, it's released, it gets absorbed into your brain at a denison receptor site. So I know I have some, some graduate students here, so I'll get, I'll get complicated for you kids. Okay, gets into the brain, and when a denison is resorbed, absorbed, it relaxes you. It helps you sleep. Okay, it opens up your blood vessels, lowers your blood pressure. So that's a normal process. Your brain produces adenosine, it's time to get tired, it's absorbed, you get tired, you go to sleep. Caffeine looks like adenosine. So when it gets into the brain, it, it gets into the adenosine receptor sites, blocks you from absorbing adenosine. So now what happens? You can't get sleepy. 
that's why coffee works. It's a stimulant, but really what it's doing, it doesn't really give you energy, it, robs, it, it prevents you from getting tired, so to speak. And it's an acid which makes your nerves fire faster too. So what happens is your brain is smarter than you, and your brain says, I need to rest. So I'm going to produce more adenosine receptor sites. So what happens then? You start getting tired, what do you do? Drink more coffee. Blocking up those adenosine receptor sites. <coughs> so it's not a good thing, because now you're messing with Mother Nature. Remember commercial, I'm old enough to remember? It's not nice to fool Mother Nature, right? <laughs> and you're fooling Mother Nature. Not a good idea. And so now the adenosine is, you're producing more adenosine and it's being absorbed and the caffeine is blocking it. So you got a mess. And now you're not sleeping, so now you get tired. And when you get tired, your muscles spasm. When muscle spasms, that increases your pain. Okay? So there's another thing we can do with pain is cut out your coffee. <laughs> <laughs> I'm scared. 90% of you, the general public, do caffeine every single day. Okay? Number one import into the United States is oil. The number two import? Coffee. Isn't that amazing? Okay? And you'll spend a lot of money for that. And I don't get it. I'll take a sip of ass and milk. Yuck. You got to get sugar and creamer. You know. I used to make the donuts. I used to work at the shop that makes the donuts. You know, a young kid. And um, even then, all the free coffee I wanted, I go, hey, I don't get it. So and it gives me a headache anyway. So. so coffee can give you a headache. Caffeine can give you a headache. It can fire off the nerves in your head. And so that's something you really want to consider cutting out if you are a pain patient. And if you're not a pain patient, cut it out so that you don't become a pain patient. I had a patient come in the other day screaming in pain, shaking. She couldn't stand up and she's doing this. And she said, I gotta go have a smoke. <laughs> I used to say there's 100 billion free radicals in a, cup, in, a, in a cigarette, in one puff of a cigarette. 100 billion free radicals like molecules, they eat through things. I was wrong. The new research shows there's 100 trillion free radicals per puff of cigarettes. Now, what do you think these little Pac-Men do when they hit the nerves? It kills it. It kills it. It eats away at them, right? It hurts. So that becomes a big problem. So I said, you need to cut out the cigarettes. And so we worked on her. My, one of my other doctors worked on her. She came in yesterday, and she was smiling. And she said, I'm able to walk. And I said, isn't that exciting? I said, how are you doing with the cigarettes? She goes, don't talk about that yet. <laughs> <laughs> so amazing when the pain was gone, whoop, cigarettes out the window. So hopefully we'll get her to quit smoking. But if you smoke, I always joke, you can pretty much ignore everything I, I'll ever teach you because it don't matter, okay? You gotta cut out those cigarettes. Those are the worst things you can do. 100 trillion free radicals. Also, I'm gonna give you a whole lecture on cigarettes. Nah, not today. Okay, almost got off of my cigarette tangent there. Okay, If you smoke, stop, is, is what I'm telling you. So that can cause more pain as well, free radicals eating away things. Okay, we talked about alcohol, we talked about coffee. Um, pinched nerves, dehydration, sugar. It's another one you're gonna get mad at me for, right? Okay. Anybody vegan here? Any vegans? Side, a couple? Okay, three, three of us? Okay, that's it. The rest of you, shame. <laughs> it's funny because vegans say, well, I'm vegan, and that, just because you're vegan doesn't mean you're healthy, by the way, right? Okay, you see a lot of people sucking down brownies and cookies and donuts and coffee, it's vegan, you know? But, <laughs> Dr. Joe said it must be good. <laughs> The kicker is this, that a lot of the sugar that you're eating, white sugar, is not vegan. That's gross. Because here in the United States, we do something weird. We filter the sugar to make it white. Then we use charcoal to filter it. And a lot of the charcoal we use comes from charred animal bones. Oh. Makes a very nice charcoal to filter sugar. So, that's an aside note. It's high gross factor. That's, a, that's way up there in a the gross factor, okay? But sugar is an acid too, robs the body of calcium. And sugar breaks down to two components, fructose and glucose, table sugar, white table sugar, 50% fructose, 50% glucose. Glucose is used by your brain. It's what makes your brain work, it makes your muscles work, it's the fuel we use. The fructose portion has to be converted into glucose to be used as fuel. With me so far? Okay. If you take more than 20 grams of fructose per day, the fructose conversion in the liver gives off a waste product called uric acid. <coughs> uric acid gets in your joints and it hurts. What's the big disease with uric acid? 
Gout. Gout, exactly. But it affects all the joints, not just your big toe. It affects all the joints and it hurts. So when patients come in our offices, we do a nutritional workup on them. And the reason we do a nutritional workup on them is because I want you to stop putting the foods in your body that are causing the pain. Because if you come see us as chiropractors and we do the best job in the world and you don't get all the results you want, you're going to blame us. It's not our fault. It's your fault. Because you kept eating fructose. So fructose converts into uric acid. Uric acid gets in your joints and it hurts. Uric acid prevents the body from producing nitric oxide. Remember nitric oxide? Citrulline? Okay? Nitric oxide opens up your blood vessels. So, so if you don't have good blood supply, you can get buildup of waste products because the blood is like a, a sewer. It kind of flushes all the waste products out. And those waste products can get into the joints and the nerves and hurt. So if you're doing regular sugar, you're getting 50% fructose. High fructose corn syrup is worse. Oh, that's gross. But not by much. The reaction is worse, but the chemicals, it's about 55% fructose, 45% glucose. Not much, 55%. But that 5% causes more uric acid buildup, getting into the joints and hurting, preventing nitric oxide production. And it also turns into fat then, too. And I can explain that. I can explain that, okay. okay. Let me do that first. All right. Then remind me, I'm going to talk about agave nectar. You're up front, you got to work. Okay, so <laughs> teach you to sit up front. It's funny, sometimes I do corporate lectures. A lot of times corporations bring me in. Is that for me? For me, I'm not here. Okay. <laughs> I'm in the shower. <laughs> and it's funny, because in corporate lectures, everybody sits in the back. So what I do then is I say, turn your chairs around. And I lecture from the back. <laughs> Bam. So... All the cool kids in the back get busted. So. All right, so what happens is if you eat sugar, the glucose is used as fuel. And that's good if you're using it. You're out there working out. You're being an active person. So what happens is what if we put too much fructose in our body? The body has to do something with it because it's an acid. It stores it as glycogen. Glycogen is your stored energy. It's your reserve tank. What happens when all the reserve tank is filled up? Person. The body has to do something with the sugar. It converts it into triglycerides, which gets stored as fat. This is why carbohydrates, processed carbohydrates, can make you fat. Okay? And fat produces estrogen. Fat becomes a living, breathing organ. We used to think that fat was a blob, and that was all it was. But fat becomes a living, breathing organ, and it has its own blood supply. And it becomes a hormone, it becomes an endocrine, uh, hormone, uh, endocrine organ producing estrogen. Estrogen can make you weak. If muscles aren't strong, they can't lock the bones in place, so the bones have a tendency to shift out of place, pinching the nerves. Back to the physical reason you have pain. Right? So estrogen produces fat, which produces estrogen, which produces fat. This is why when you're fat, it's hard to lose weight because you're stuck in this cycle. Women are more estrogen dominant than men. Women, if you listened to my show last week, we talked about the, the receptor sites in the brain. Women crave sweets more than men. It's how the brain works and we believe, some people, I, I happen to be in that camp, that women crave sweets because women would want to store energy to give birth and to breastfeed. And so women have this, this evolutionary problem to store sugar because now sugar is really accessible. That becomes a problem. It's funny, women, men th women think about romance about 10 times a day. I'll keep it clean because we're being recorded. Women think about romance on the average 10 times a day. They think about sugar or food about 30 times more than that. <laughs> it's just the way the brain is made. It's not a good thing or a bad thing. It's not an accusation. It's how the brain works. So the women are trying to store fat. That's why sugar produces fat. But the problem is that was when we didn't have a lot of access to sugar. And the key word there is processed sugar. If I'm eating an apple, apple is loaded with vitamins, minerals, and nutrients, alkalizes my system, and has fiber. And fiber slowly pushes the food through the colon, so I get a slow release of energy. If I drink apple juice, that fructose, bam, gets absorbed immediately. Pancreas goes nuts. I give you a whole lecture on pancreas. I don't have time for that. But that's not the way to do it. So I don't want you drinking fruit juices. It can increase your pain. Okay? You can eat fruit, 
but even too much fruit can be a problem. I usually recommend about three or four pieces a day. That's about it. More vegetables than fruit. Okay. Years ago, somebody came to me and they said, Dr. Joe, what would you consider the world's best supplement? And I said, if somebody could take fruits and vegetables and take the sugar out, that would be like the world's best. Imagine taking fruits and vegetables, put them in a pill without sugar. Oh my God, wouldn't that be great? I did it. <laughs> I sat down with my chemists and I said, we have to create a supplement that's fruits and vegetables in a pill form with no sugar. And they said, well, if we juice it, take the water out at a very low temperature, the enzymes will stay intact. And enzymes, remind me talking about enzymes. Okay, what are you supposed to remind me about? <laughs> Did it make you sit back there? <laughs> and you got to remind me about enzymes. Okay, good. Okay. So I said, how can we keep the enzymes intact? And I'm going to talk about enzymes and pain management in a second. And so we juice it, take the water out at a very low temperature by blowing air over it, basically. It's about, what's the temperature? 78 degrees, Mary? On a... No higher than 70 degrees, okay? So there's no enzyme destruction is about 110. So a very low temperature. Basically, you have, you have stain on uh, water on your floor. You put the fan on it and blow water over it, okay? And so I took that and I said, now we have fruits and vegetables in a powder form and we can put them in a pill. And then we looked at it and we said, if we put it in a pill, we can only get so much. And we want to have more volume for less money, of course. And so I created something called Dr. Joe's Essential Source. Then we add prebiotics and probiotics. Prebiotics are good bacteria. Pro, uh, probiotics are good bacteria. Prebiotics feed the good bacteria. Following? Okay. And then we added a complete multivitamin, and I created Dr. Joe's. See how active the enzymes are? Oh, no. <laughs> Couldn't have planned that one, could I? <laughs> Write that one down, Mary. I want to use that in the next lecture. <laughs> So I take this at least once a day. Now, if I have a big day, if I'm going hiking, if I've got you know a date, if I'm going uh, a couple of lectures, I'm doing back-to-back -back radio shows. Two scoops. Two scoops. Exactly. There you go. <laughs> like Friday, I did three hours in the radio Monday morning, and then Friday morning, and then Friday night, I had to do another two hours. Plus, I saw patients in the middle. Days like that, double dose. But this stuff is just amazing, and the enzymes are still active in it. So I take this every single day. It's about a dollar a day. I couldn't make it cheaper for you, okay? So about a dollar a day, this stuff is just amazing. I couldn't imagine going a day without this. And I know if sometimes I forget or something like that, which is very rare, I know it happens. And once patients start taking it, they say, why didn't I do this sooner? They go, okay, good. Okay. <laughs> Pay attention to that. Yes? The name of the label on it? Essential source. That's the most creative thing I ever said. Get your essential nutrients from the source. That was it. That's the end of my creativity. So. And then we talked about acid while we're talking about supplements. And I thought, I've got to give somebody a mega doses, not mega doses, but a lot of minerals to neutralize the acids in the body. So what's the most alkalizing foods in the world? And the most alkalizing foods I can find were wheatgrass, barleygrass, and alfalfa grass. The wheat and barley grass, by the way, don't have gluten in them. FDA won't let me put that on the label. But I've had it tested, and I've, as far as I know, talking to everyone, there's no gluten in there. But because it has wheat and barley in it, somebody somewhere might have a reaction. So, so anyway, take wheatgrass, barleygrass, alfalfa grass. Then we had chlorella and spirulina, which is an excellent source of omega-3 fatty acids. Omega-3 fatty acids are used for anti-inflammatories. Mm -hmm. What causes pain? Inflammation. Okay. And then we added uh, dulse, which has iodine in it. Iodine helps your thyroid, but it helps all the organs in the body. So this is extremely alkalizing to the body. And then we had uh, flaxseed as well, and the flaxseed has omega-3s as well. There's two different types, but that's not for today. So I take a scoop of this and a scoop of this together. If you take just this, it's a little grassy flavoring, a little strong. When you mix the two together, it's fine. Now, some people don't mind this, but I like to mix the two. And, then I, and I do it first thing in the morning. What do you mix it uh, Coconut, you can use water if you want to, it's fine. I use coconut milk or almond milk. It's ever on sale. And um, I put it in a jar and shake it because it, you have to, it doesn't have a lot of, it's no preservatives or anything. And so you want to shake it up real good to make sure it dissolves every single day. So a dollar each about per day. Relatively inexpensive, tastes great, works great. Okay, it's good stuff. So, but the reason I say that is I want to neutralize a lot of those acids in your body and give your body the nutrients that it needs to help you build normal muscle, nerve function and give you the raw materials to produce the, the neurotransmitters that go between the synapses. Remember that? Okay, any stu students here? 
What are the two ends of the nerves called when they come to create a synapse? A bouton. Useless information. <laughs> You'll never use that again. <laughs> they what? A bouton. My what? A bouton, the way the nerves come together? Yeah, it's useless information. Don't, don't write it down. <laughs> Save that brain cell for something way more important than that, okay? <laughs> <laughs> don't waste that brain cell on that useless information. It'll never come up again in your life. <clears throat> so the supplements I take every day, one of the reasons is I'm a chronic pain patient. I have a fracture in my low back, fracture in my neck. I was hit by a car when I was about 10 years old, landed on my head and rolled into a ditch. It was in Germany between cities. They thought I was dead. They left me. The guy didn't leave us. Finally came by. They got the police. Police came. They called an ambulance. Lay there on the side of the road for a couple hours. They thought I was dead. They covered me up, put me in the ambulance, and I moved. And I went, I guess he's not dead. So, so I got to be real careful. I've got a lot of trauma in my body. And with the laws of a chiropractic, I, I definitely wouldn't be here. I know that. There's no question about that. But as a chronic pain patient, I got to make sure I always make sure everything's the best it can be. That's why something like coffee will blow off my headaches. So you got to be real careful about what you put in your body because your body, this is it. You know, this is the only one you got. Like it or not, it's what you got. So the pain issues uh, are because the nerves are firing off. And then there's something called fibromyalgia, which all the nerves are firing off all the time. And I find that when fibro cases, there's a digestive problem. How does the digestive system cause that? Your stomach's job, well, your mouth's job is to digest carbohydrates. Okay, so carbohydrates are broken down. Oh, you know what? Let me go back a little bit. Fructose. Enzyme. High fructose. No, agave. agave. Let me cover that first, then I'll cover enzymes and, and the digestion will tie in with the enzymes. Okay. <laughs> agave nectar, you've heard of it, right? Yeah. It's healthy, right? Yes. Low glycemic index. Oh, I know. I got I to beat you here on this one. Low glycemic index. So when you eat it, it doesn't spike your blood sugar. It must be great. You know why it doesn't spike your blood sugar? Because Remember, sugar is 50-50, fructose and glucose, right? Mm -hmm. High fructose corn syrup is 55% fructose. Fructose bad. Agave nectar, 85% fructose. So the reason it's not spiking your blood sugar because it's fructose, fructose has to go into the liver and go through the process to become glucose. So that's why it doesn't spike your blood sugar. It's causing the liver problems. Following? So don't use agave. That's what I'm telling you. All right, not happy with agave. Okay, so digestive system. This will tie into enzymes now. Your, st your mouth starts breaking down carbohydrates with something uh, called salivary amylase. Fat salivary amylase breaks down carbohydrates into simple sugars. Food goes into your stomach. Your stomach's job is to take proteins and break them into amino acids. The amino acids are building blocks of the protein. And so the stomach's job has pepsin and pepsinogen to break, the, 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 br break up the uh, proteins into amino acids. Then it goes into your small intestine, your pancreas, pancreas, releases amylase, lipase, and protease to break down carbohydrates, fats, and proteins. Your gallbladder releases fat, uh, uh, bile to break down fats. So every place, there's two places to digest carbohydrates and fats. Or all carbohydrates, fats, and proteins are digested in two different places. So if you have a gallbladder removed, you're still producing bile, but not as much. Luckily, your pancreas has to kick in then and help you. Problem is, if you overburden your pancreas, it can stop working. And one of the most deadly diseases or cancers there is, is pancreatic cancer. Why? Your pancreas isn't producing enzymes anymore. Enzymes break down your food to absorb your nutrients. There's your enzymes. Okay, there's your feed. So I like to give my body enzymes every single day from the outside to take the stress off my stomach, my spit, my pancreas, and my gallbladder. So if I can take the stress off my body and not run it so hard, chances are it's going to last a lot longer. And that's my goal. I want to be around a long time. So you want to get enzymes, and the only place we can get enzymes from is raw food. Raw meat. I don't recommend you eat that, but raw meat has enzymes. That's why if you feed nothing but cooked meat to your pet without replacing the enzymes as a supplement, the pet will get sick and probably die. If you fed them raw meat, okay, like your dog or your cat. Pottinger's cats, anybody ever study Pottinger's cats? No? The only one in the whole world? Okay. One person, Mary. Okay. <laughs> Pottinger came up with this idea. He said he's going to take two, two groups of cats. One he's going to feed raw meat, one's going to feed cooked meat. That's it. And by the third generation, the cats who ate the cooked meat were sterile. And they had small litters. Litters died. Uh, they were weak. They had weak immune systems. They developed diseases like cancer. The, animals, the cats that ate the raw meat were fine. Enzymes. 
Okay? So you need enzymes too. I don't recommend you eat more raw meat, or any meat, but you can get enzymes from raw fruits and vegetables, nuts and seeds. That's why we keep the fruits and the vegetables raw in the super greens and the essential source. Okay? So the enzymes, what they do is when you have inflammation, the body sends out enzymes to break up the inflammation. What famous enzyme you might know of from pineapple? Bromelain. Bromelain is in pineapple and papayas and it breaks down inflammation. That's why when you eat pineapple, sometimes the inside of your mouth gets raw. That's the enzyme breaking down the inside of your mouth. Pretty wild, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. So you need the enzymes to break up the inflammation and you get that from eating raw food. Now if you don't eat raw food, your body has to start producing the enzymes. Again, putting stress on the organs so chronic pain now can affect the organ function. Oh, well that's pretty cool. And so that's why I really want you to consider eating more raw food. Broccoli, cucumbers, tomatoes, avocados, salad. Uh, here's my rule on raw food. I want you to have one thing raw uh, um, uh, per meal. Maybe it's an apple. Maybe it's a salad. Maybe it's a cucumber. Maybe it's a pineapple. Something raw at every meal. That's going to replace a lot of your enzymes and help with the healing process. Okay, can you follow that rule? That's not hard, yes. Cookie dough, that's raw. Cookie dough is raw, that counts. <laughs> <laughs> Security. <laughs> <laughs> I've been lecturing now for decades. I've never thought of that. <laughs> no, cookie dough. Now somebody's going to take this clip off YouTube and go, Dr. Joe said raw cookie dough is good. <laughs> but you need the raw food. That's why I recommend raw supplements and whole food supplements. What I mean by that is you don't want it fractioned out. Because a lot of times people take supplements and say, well, I need vitamin C. So I'm going to go out and I'm going to buy vitamin C at the big box store for a bottle this big for $3 and I'm going to take my vitamin C and it's going to be awesome. Well, the problem is the vitamin C that they sell there is called ascorbic acid. Ascorbic acid is one eighth of the vitamin C molecule. It's not the whole vitamin C molecule. So it doesn't work as well as the real vitamin C. So you want to make sure you don't take synthetic supplements. And they did a study one time on glucosamine chondroitin sulfate, which helps build your joints. And they, I read the whole study, it was this long lengthy study, and I read it. And, I, and in the end, they finally said one, they said, what's the one common denominator on all the glucosamine supplements that work? And the answer was, if it costs less than a dollar a day, it didn't work. So the cheap stuff doesn't work. My grandfather was a German immigrant, came here in 1922, I think it was, from Germany, during World War II, and he didn't speak English. Hoboken, New Jersey. Not a good place to be, okay? But he wanted to get away from uh, what was happening in Germany. And some of the advice he gave me, he didn't talk much, but when he did, he gave great advice. And some of the advice he gave me, he says, always buy the best. It's always cheaper. And boy, is that ever true. You know, I mean, some, maybe not everything, but I, I mean, I got what he's saying. And when it comes to your health, don't take shortcuts. Because oh. eventually, you're going to pay for it. Yeah. It's always more expensive. And I tell patients that, I, in fact, the Super Green is the essential source. I get emails all the time. Say, Dr. Joe, I saved so much money by taking that because I'm not hungry anymore. Because when you're hungry, you're not hungry for food, you're hungry for nutrition. So if I can give you super concentrated forms of nutrition, it helps curb your appetite, you eat less food. They say, Doc, I can't afford not to take it. It costs me more money when I don't take it than when I do. And that's really cool. And we're hopefully adding years to your life. So one of the things that happens is if anybody here, 80% of you would, would probably say yes to this, if you have any digestive problems, acid reflux, heartburn, burping, gas, bloating, chronic cough, chronic sinus problems, many times that's acid coming up your esophagus and irritating your sinuses. And that's what caused that <coughs> chronic cough that lasts for years and years and years. So what we have to do in cases like that, we have to manually adjust or pull the stomach down away from the diaphragm. When we pull the stomach down away from the diaphragm, the stomach relaxes, it's able to mix the stomach acids with the proteins to break them into amino acids. Because if these amino acids aren't broken down properly, they go into the small intestine and they get absorbed. And when these big chunks of amino acids, uh, proteins, I'm sorry, get absorbed, the immune system attacks them. And the immune system goes crazy attacking it, causing an inflammatory reaction. And if the immune system starts attacking the body itself, it could lead to autoimmune conditions. So every autoimmune case I've ever seen, I always find a digestive component that somebody didn't diagnose. Or uh, diagnose, maybe not treat. You know you have acid reflux, what do you do about it? 
Okay? So we can pull the stomach away from the diaphragm, and in many cases, not all, but most, it works extremely well. Okay? So, and the stomach's job is to take proteins and get them into amino acids. The amino acid tryptophan becomes serotonin in your brain. Serotonin helps you calm down and focus. Tyrosine becomes dopamine. Dopamine gives you pleasure. Yep. And when you're in pain, you're not having a lot of pleasure. Okay? Glutamine becomes something called GABA. GABA is the neurotransmitter in your brain that suppresses pain. Oh. That's why somebody who's in chronic pain, they've tried a lot of the medications, we run out of choices, the last thing we usually give them is GABApentin. It's a GABA to help suppress the other pain. 90% of your brain is suppressing the other 10%. <laughs> it's pretty much your brain's job is suppress everything else. Otherwise, that's why when people start having shakes or seizures, many times that 10% goes into 11 or 12%. It's not being suppressed and you start having physical reactions. So GABA is the neurotransmitter that helps your brain suppress pain. And if you're not digesting your food properly, you may not be getting enough GABA, which can affect the neurotransmitter production of GABA, which means you're not suppressing pain. There's a lot of things. Yeah, okay. I can keep going if you want me to keep going. Okay, all right. All right. I try to keep it right around an hour, otherwise you, you start to do a little butt dance, you know? <laughs> it's an hour, shut up, I gotta go. <laughs> and as we get older, our, di our digestive enzymes don't work like they used to. You don't just, nothing works like it used to as you get older, right? So. <laughs> So we can help the body. So as we get older, we should be eating more raw food, not less. And unfortunately, especially if you've ever been to a, a ho home, assisted living, Santa Maria, my God, they're feeding these people canned yuck, you know? And it's, it's disgusting, it, just, it drives me nuts. Um, and so in cases like that, if you know someone in that situation, you might want to be the, 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 the angel and bring them some raw food. Bring them some super greens and essential source is easy. I mean, it's cheap, it's easy, it's, it's convenient, it doesn't go bad. But raw food is such a key to keep the body working because of the enzymes and the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients. And if you're eating that, then you're not eating the other stuff either, which helps too. Okay? So with fibromyalgia patients, I always find acid reflux or heartburn or burping, gas, or bloating. And once we start pulling their stomach away from their diaphragm, we seem to alkalize, and I can measure their pH, we alkalize the system, and a lot of the pain goes away. So do some vegetables you need to cook with um, asparagus? Do some vegetables you need to cook? Well, there's a pro and a con to that. There's no right answer to that. Like, for example, if you cook spinach or tomatoes, tomatoes is a good one, uh, it frees up more lycopene. Lycopene is an is a antioxidant. It's good for men, us prostate, pro, uh, men with prostate issues. Uh, it's a good idea to have, get the lycopene. But when you cook the tomato, you destroy the enzymes. <laughs> so. You could eat some cooked, I'm, I'm not 100% raw, I have, like I said, something raw at every meal, but try to make sure you get something raw at every meal, if, if, and, and I don't think it's really that important, you know, to cook it or not cook it, just try to get the variety in your diet, otherwise it gets a little crazy. Can you talk about how to take or not take apple cider vinegar? Oh, yes. This stuff is nasty, isn't it? Because <laughs> I like to take it straight. Oh, you like it straight? This is a real man right here, okay? I want to see a real man. That's what they look like. I just take everything. I try to get it all in, so I don't like that. But my wife says it's not a good idea. Well, it's fine to take it straight. Wash it down with some water, and you're fine. Um, you can mix it. Yeah, you can mix it with water if you want to. Mix it with water and stevia. Usually, about two tablespoons a day is a good place to be. Apple cider vinegar, even though it's an acid, remember acids? When it's digested, it becomes alkaline. What's called the ash, what's left over once it's digested, becomes alkaline. And so the alkalinity, this is great to help alkalize the system. It has prebiotics and probiotics in it. It has a lot of potassium in it. Um, so this stuff is great, and I think you should use it every single day. Okay? If you can handle it. Yes? Hold, hold, hold on. Yeah? When we have all those supplements up there, uh -huh. I get a little nervous because I try to try all these things. Sure. Is there a sequence or a better time to take it so they don't counteract? Great question. Yes. Uh, the answer is not really. Okay. <laughs> uh, I take all my supplements first thing in the morning, and the reason I take them first thing in the morning is because I'll forget. My life gets in the way, and your life gets in the way, and by the end of the day, you're like, oh, I just forgot my supplements. Yeah. So, is it vital? No. If you take enzymes, let's talk about enzymes. I have one, and again, those supplements are coming out. Life Grocery said they're going to start carrying them, so it's going to be here next week. Uh, Dr. Joe's enzyme formula. If you take the enzyme formula with food, it'll digest the food. 
If you take it on an empty stomach between meals, the enzymes get absorbed that can actually help fight inflammation. If you have a cold or a flu, some studies show that if you take enzymes between meals, it helps fight the viruses, germs, and bacteria. So when you take an enzyme, yes, that's important. Okay? Empty stomach is better, uh, and, if, and, because, and if you take a probiotic, empty stomach is better, because if you eat food, the acid levels go up and it kill off a lot of the probiotics. That being said, I'd rather see you take it on a full stomach than not take it at all. So it's all about, you know, that. Yes? Uh, could you explain what the mother... Sure. In the, in the, avocado. the mother and the apple cider vinegar is where the back, that's the stuff that settles on the bottom. Sometimes it's a clump, looks like boogers. Okay, so <laughs> that's a scientific word. And uh, yeah, that's where the bacteria is. Yeah, it's because that's where the bacteria is. And the bacteria, they feed off the food, and they produce more bacteria. So that's why it's the mother, it makes baby bacteria. Okay. It's just yeah, alive enzymes. Yeah. Yes. Speaking of uh, probiotics, yes. uh, what would be in terms of like eating? What would be a good time? Eating, we like to take, okay, when to take probiotics, you mean? Take them on an empty stomach is ideal. So if you're going to take probiotics, it's a good idea to take them on an empty stomach. So we have a Dr. Joe probiotic formula for people with really bad digestive issues, and I'll tell them first thing in the morning when you wake up, take it. Wait a half hour to an hour before you eat. But again, I'd rather see you take it with food than not take it at all. So don't say, oh, I didn't take it on an empty stomach, I can't take it. The ideal time to take it is on an empty stomach. <laughs> I've, I've been reading the book, I've read it a couple of times, and you know, I'm sure you're familiar with Dr. David Fulmeyer and the brain brain yes. uh -huh. and all that. And it seems like the information, he's more of, obviously, the effect of gluten neurologically on the brain. Uh, but he had the case, he obviously made them very under purpose, mm -hmm. contained cholesterol, right. because of the importance of that for the brain. And sure. The development of the you know, synopsis. Sure. So what do you think about that? Sure. If, you, if your body's healthy, you produce your own cholesterol. I mean, animals make cholesterol. We make cholesterol. If I was going to eat his arm, I'd get cholesterol. Okay? I don't agree with Dr. Perlmutter, although I respect him tremendously. I don't think anyone ever has to eat animal products. I've yet to see any study ever that convinced me otherwise. And if I was convinced otherwise, I'd be the first one to tell you. Okay? Um, but I don't agree you ever need to eat animal products. I do agree with the wheat part because wheat... There's different types of gluten. There's corn gluten, wheat gluten. Uh, the wheat gluten is made up glia of gliadin and glutenin. And gliadin and glutenin, when you get into the colon, cause an inflammatory reaction. So I agree 100% that if you want to get pain out of your body, you need to give up the two main foods would be wheat and dairy products. And because dairy products have casein in it, and that can be a problem as well. So uh, I, I agree with a lot of what he says. I don't agree with everything. Yeah. If, if I'm eating an adequate diet of fruit, vegetables, nuts, and seeds, and you obviously do, uh -huh. you also take your super greens and essential source. Yes, I do. Where do the other supplements come into play? And I'm thinking in terms of economics. Oh, economic. Okay. Well, absolutely. The minimum I would take is super greens and essential source. I also take an adrenal supplement. We have Dr. Joe's adrenal support. I take that as well every day. I take an omega-3 fatty acid. I take algae oil. It's expensive. More expensive than fish oil, but it's the purest form of omega-3 fatty acids. And for me, I only want the best. And the cool thing is that when you start changing your diet and eating right, you're going to save so much money, even with all the supplements I can tell you to take, that you're going to, at the end of the month, go, where does this money come from? Everyone does. And they're amazed. So you're going to have a lot more money to do whatever you want with it. Okay? It's your money in your pocket. It's, you're going to save it. And you'll feel so much better, you'll, you'll probably spend less money on doctor visits. But from a financial standpoint, I take Super Greens Essential Source, I take uh, the uh, adrenal supplement, and I take the, uh, uh, the omega-3 fatty acid. And then in the winter, I take vitamin D as well. And we have Dr. Joe's vitamin D3 with K2 in it. Pretty simple. And it's a, what is K2? K, K2 is a, a supplement that helps build bone mass. Okay, very important for bone mass, and that's why a lot of people are missing K2. Fermented vegetables, if you make your own kimchi or uh, uh, sauerkraut or natto. Anybody ever have natto before? Nastiest food. You like it? You just, you've had it. You didn't say you like it. <laughs> if you can imagine rotten, stinky socks, wet, and then fermented, that's natto. That's so. <laughs> Ugh. But it's a great source of K2. Yeah. In your corporate list, you have aspirin. Uh, I've heard low dose aspirin is good for heart. Low dose aspirin will thin your blood, but there is a side effect to it. Okay, so I'd rather just have you have a healthy diet and have thin blood than have a bad diet and have to thin your blood. Eat a good diet. Yeah. It's funny when I donate blood and I do it as often as I can. When I donate blood, I always tell them, I said, now my blood's going to come out a lot faster than other people's, and they're like. 
idiot. <laughs> and then I, I remember one time there was a heavy set woman next to me and me, and they put the needle in exactly the same time. My bag filled up, and her bag was half full, and mine was full. And I called them over. I said, I told you this. Oh my gosh. And my blood is bright red. And they said, this, your blood is so, so, what a pretty color. And I said, no, that's normal oxygenated blood. You've never seen normal. You've seen average, but you've never seen normal. <laughs> so I figured, who's ever getting my blood, baby? <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> the juice All right, back, back to the weed. Yes. Is that, avoiding weed, does that include weed germ and weed brand? Yes. Yep. Just the whole... Whole kit and caboodle. Whatever kit and caboodle is, it's all of it. You mentioned the adenosine earlier. Yes. Now, is that adenosine as in phosphates? Same right, who had a wrong chemical? Yeah, you're right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Helps you relax and calm down. Yeah. Adenosine? I, I went to school in New Jersey. What do I know? <laughs> we had a barbed wire fence around our school with the barbs facing in. No kidding. They didn't want us escaping. So. <laughs> A D A D E N O. Help me out. School. You're the school teacher. How come you don't know it? <laughs> yeah, I don't have enough time to read all that help. Okay. More questions. Yeah. Spirulina with yeah. other top three alkalis. Yes. Grasses. So what part does spirulina play? Is it just another alkali? It, it's a great source of omega-3 fatty acids. In fact, fish don't make omega-3 fatty acids. Okay. That's a lie. Fish get it from eating smaller fish who eat smaller fish who eat algae. So the algae is who, who makes the omega-3, and that's why I take the algae oil and not the fish or the krill oil. The Daniel diet, is that tying to what you're talking about? The Daniel diet? Yeah. Yeah, well, that's, I always laugh. People say, I did a Daniel fast. Well, you're not fasting. You're just eating the way you're supposed to eat. Okay? If you know the book of Daniel, right? If you heard the story, right? Daniel ate the food of the paupers, and he, he, his men were super warriors. Yeah, that's what happens. I'm 107 years old. <laughs> right, man. I got to live all my... I got to make younger friends, because all my friends are going to die off, I figure so. A lot of the information you're talking about tonight in your book. Yes, a lot of stuff is in my book, not put together the way I put it together tonight. And in fact, when I walked in, I had no time to plan for this lecture. Just so you know, there was no prep for this lecture. This was all off the top of my head. I mean that. So, but a lot of it is in the book, very easily condensed for you. Yeah. So if you, if you don't have this book, you need to get it. And if you don't have this book, you need to get it. There, that's it. That's my plug on books. Okay. No. <laughs> All this stuff will be here. The new supplements aren't in yet, but they'll be here next week. This book is great. I have to say, this book came out really well. Um, it's real simple. I made it in little, little chunks so that, you know, you, you with ADD can read it, okay? Little chunks at a time. Uh, but everyone's just crazy about that book. And this book tells you how to change your diet. This book is more about why to change your diet, if that makes sense, okay? So if you're looking at how to change your diet, Dr. Joe, I need a guide. This is your guide. How to change your diet, recipes, all simple, basic stuff in here. Okay, so get the books because uh, I have to pay Mary. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you don't need them. Uh, if you're going to do a protein drink, make sure it's a plant based protein. I would never do whey. If it is whey, it has to be cold pressed organic or cold processed organic. Never do it when it's heated, it changes the molecular structure. You don't need a protein drink. Your body only needs about 8 to 10 percent of its total caloric intake as protein. A carrot is 6 percent. Okay, so I, you can eat total plant-based diet and be fine. I mean, I'm fine. You know, I run circles around my 20-year-old staff, so. Yes? Uh, Dr. Scott, a very interesting yeah. question. If you say go for fruits and vegetables, but if it's not organic, uh -huh. is it healthy? Even it's better to eat non-organic fruits and vegetables than it is to eat animal products who are eating the non-organic fruits and vegetables and storing the toxic chemicals in their fat cells. Yes. So I'd rather see eat non-organic fruits and vegetables than the typical American diet. If you can do organic, absolutely. Okay. Yes. How trustworthy is that organic label? Pretty trustworthy. Can I swear by it? No, but you, at least you got a shot of it being organic. If it doesn't say it, it's definitely not organic. Okay. All right, real quick, we run out of time, and then I want to I want to give you presents because girls like what? Yeah. Presents, there you go. Diamonds. <laughs> Diamonds, yeah. <laughs> the wise guy. Do you have any information on migraines and, and that type of Absolutely, thing? yes. Uh -huh. My daughter had a concussion of four years ago. Oh, welcome aboard, yeah. <laughs> and since then, she almost has like an annual migraine that really sure. takes her out for about a month. Yep. Like a couple of things that cause migraines, artificial sweetener, number one, aspartame, uh, monosodium glutamate, number two, in my first book, we have a list of about 40 different names for monosodium glutamate. 
It's never listed as monosodium, hardly ever listed as monosodium glutamate. You know what that is. What if I called it autolyzed yeast? Hydrolyzed vegetable protein. How about natural flavor? That can be MSG. So with someone like you, I do a nutritional workup and find out what you're eating. And then we also got to check the nerve supply in the neck. If you had a concussion, you also have dislocated bones in your neck. You had to. Okay? We got to get those bones back in place to open up the nerve supply. Okay? Which leads me into my last statement. If you're here and you're not a patient yet, I'd like to invite you all to come in as patients. Okay, my office is about three minutes from here. We also have offices in Duluth and Stockbridge. But I'd like to come in and get checked. And the reason I say this is 10% of the nerves feel pain, 90% don't. Remember we talked about that an hour ago? And you may have a pinched nerve and not know it. And I don't want you to be like so many of my other patients that have come to me over the years and said, why didn't I do this sooner? Why did I suffer so long? Because if bones are out of alignment, they're also rubbing up against each other and they wear out. So if you have a bone out of place, the only promise I can make you, I can't promise you I can help you, but I can promise you it'll probably get worse and the joints will wear out. Okay? If you've ever been in a car accident, if you've ever had a concussion, if you've ever played sports, chances are you have bones out of place. So I would love the opportunity to meet with you and my staff to discuss if you have a problem. If you do, we'll tell you. And if you don't, we're going to tell you that too. But here's the rules. If you make an appointment, show up. Show up. <laughs> Exactly. We are extremely busy. You can imagine how busy our offices are. We would love to meet with you, but don't make an appointment and not show up because it's, hey, it's bad karma. I'm also Italian. Don't cross the family, all right? But don't take up somebody else's appointment because if you make an appointment and don't show up and she could have had that appointment, that's not fair. Okay? Number two, if you're not ready to do something about it, don't make an appointment. Because I don't want to sit there and spend all my time and all my paperwork and all my energy and all my staff time and you go, eh, I don't really care. I'm not going to do anything about it. Okay? So if you want to make an appointment, Mar give Mary your name and phone number on your way out today and on your way out you get your presents. So I have a way to get you here. Mary will call you tomorrow morning to book your appointment. We accept most insurances. We accept people with no insurances, car accidents, sports injuries. I've never seen a car accident ever where the car was damaged where the occupants weren't. Ever. So if you were in an accident 30 years ago, 40 years ago, yesterday, it doesn't matter. If the car was damaged, you were damaged. You need to get that fixed. Because you will regret it. And many, many patients over the years have regretted not getting it checked. So if you want to do that, see Mary. On your way out, you're going to see Mary anyway because she's going to give you a discount for 10% off everything you buy today. Everything. So you can go shop like crazy and save 10% on your whole purchase. Okay, and that's my present to you. Um, if you want to get the supplements, the books, it's all here. Okay, we got a cold and flu, oh well, can't call it cold and flu anymore. Um, Dr. Joe's Wellness Booster, I take this every day in the winter because this helps stimulate white blood cell production. It's herbs that stimulate white blood cell production. If I do feel something coming on where everybody else was so sick with the flu, I missed zero days. I've missed a half a day in the past 32 years of practice, 33 years of practice. This is a we, uh, ginger, horseradish, cayenne pepper, onion, and garlic. It tastes the way it sounds. <laughs> but I tell you what, you want to you want it works. There you go. You want to knock out something? This stuff is there for you. It works real well. A lot of people travel with this. Pilots take this. Flight attendants. And then if your bowels aren't moving two to three times a day, yes, I said a day, not a week. We have Dr. Joe's intestinal cleanser, very gentle to stimulate bowel function, to clean out a lot of waste products out of your colon. Okay? 